Hello everyone and welcome to the very first installment of the StarCraft Daily Report. Here we will be keeping you up to date on a daily basis on all things relevant and prevalent in the StarCraft 2 universe. So if you want to stay up to date on StarCraft 2 news, make sure you do go ahead and subscribe to our channel. And with that said, let's kick things off with our first segment, Straight from the Source. Over on the Battle.net forums, Blizzard recently posted a poll inquiring into the community as to whether or not you enjoy team games. And if you do enjoy team games, what bracket do you enjoy the most? Now, as of this moment, among all who have voted, the 2v2 bracket does seem to be the most popular. I myself did vote for the 4v4 bracket, just because I enjoy all the brackets, but I kind of enjoy the heckness that a 4v4 can bring. Now, that... Unfortunately, at this moment, happens to be dead last, so if you guys like the 4v4 bracket as well, go ahead and vote to uh, bump my selection up there. But aside from that, I want to know, what, what bracket do you guys enjoy? Uh, you can go on over to the Battle.net forums and vote yourself, or you can just let me know in the comments below. Over on the EU Battle.net forums, we had an interesting post discussing the Battle.net matchmaking system. I know lots of players have had many questions about the matchmaking system, and this post does a pretty good job of answering those basic ideas and talking about the fundamentals of the system. Essentially what it says is, you know, obviously it attempts to match up against someone within your skill level, but in terms of how you progress, it all depends on who you face, who you fight, and who you beat. Now, it doesn't take into account the way you win, if it's a fast win, if it's a cheese win, if it's a rush or if it's a long game but what it does take into account is the difficulty of your match now what this means is that if you're facing against an opponent who is higher ranked than you and you beat them then you're getting more points and you're going to get bumped up in the system but if you face against an opponent who's beneath your skill level and you beat them you don't get quite as many points and on the reverse end of that if you lose to someone above you you don't lose as many points but if you lose to someone who is below your skill level and you're expected to beat then you're going to lose a ton of points so looking at it this way as opposed to raw wins and losses is kind of the better way to, to think about the matchmaking system and to think about why you are or are not getting bumped up in the system. It all relates to the type of person you beat. And that about wraps it up for Straight From The Source. Brings us into our next segment, Community News. Over on TeamLiquid.net, there was just recently a post discussing a change in maps for the GSL map pool. Essentially what we're looking at are there are going to be four maps that are to be replaced in the GSL map pool and there are four possible candidates as their replacements. What's going to be removed as of now we know Steps of War, Delta Quadrant, Blistering Sands and there's one unknown fourth one. And at the moment in the Gisado Star Challenge they are testing four new possible maps to take the place of those four being replaced. The four new possible maps are Iron Garden, Taldarum Altar, Biohazard and Crossfire. Now those maps were uploaded on the EU servers by Smiley and you can go ahead and search GSL to play and test those maps. Now moving on over to ForStrategyGaming.com, there was a recent post by Chris Lojsova, which is kind of a beginner's guide for Protoss players. So if you are a Protoss player and you're looking for some helpful tips and hints on to try to improve your gameplay, this is taken from his perspective and the things that he's learned and gone through in practicing and trying to become a better StarCraft player. Definitely a good post and I suggest checking it out. That's everything for community news and let's move on into our next segment, The Forum Lurker. On the StarCraft 2 Battle.net forums, there was a post recently by Unrivaled, and it is a detailed guide to Terran free-for-all. Now, in this guide, he gives you good starting build orders, what to scout for, army compositions and counters, expoing and macro advice, micro, when to attack and your goals in attacking, and then wraps it all up with replays that include wins, losses, and some of the fundamentals that he discusses in the forum. Now, at the moment, this is the most popular forum post, so go ahead and check it out. Some pretty useful information here for Terran players when it comes to playing your free-for-all matches. Moving on over to the Team Liquid forums, there was a recent post by Chessy Cat, which is an in-depth analysis of the Protoss Zealot, going over its strengths, its weaknesses, how it works in all the matchups against Zerg, against Terran, against Protoss, and how it works early game, mid game, and late game. Very, very detailed, in-depth analysis of the unit, and this is the kind of thing I really enjoy reading, and this is one of the aspects that I really love about StarCraft. You know, there's so much you can focus on, there's so much detail you can go into even pertaining to an individual unit so really great great post by chessy cat and if you haven't seen it already i definitely suggest checking it out 
Now, next in the lineup, we have tournament discussion. Now, coming up tomorrow, Sunday, January 9th, 2011, there are four big tournaments that we're going to be looking at, the first of which is the SEA tournament number four, and this is, of course, on the SEA server. We have two tournaments on the U.S. servers, and this is the Bigfoot Zelnaga Cup number one, and then the SPGL Weekly number 16. And then the fourth and final tournament tomorrow, Sunday, January 9th, is on the EU servers, and this is going to be the Steel Series Go4 SC2 number 71. Now, I'm going to put information about those tournaments below in the description of the video so if you're interested you can go ahead and check those out and we will be segueing from tournament news right into our game of the day Today's game of the day is a game between Demaga and Braddock. It took place on Metalopolis. It's a game I casted earlier in the day, and you can find it right here on our channel. Really fun and exciting a game. It is a Zerg versus Terran matchup, again, on Metalopolis. The game is roughly about 20 minutes long. Um, there's a bunch of dropping that goes on. There's some muta harassment, some speedlings, banelings. Really exciting, really fun matchup, so I suggest checking it out. And just so you know, this isn't always going to be a shameless plug. The game of the day is going to be all around the community. This is just how I'm starting things off with the shameless plug. Uh, can you blame me it's my show and today's tip of the day is going to be the following use your hotkeys that is the tip of the day and i can't really understate this, this is something i go over many in many occasion with my students and it's just something that in general people really need to try to focus on using hockey is an absolutely vital part of playing the game now not only your in-game building hockeys and unit producing hockeys but hockeying your production buildings you know as a terran player making sure your command center your barracks your factory and your starport as protoss making sure you have your nexus your warp gates your robos and your starport and then as a zerg player making sure your hatcheries and queens are all hockeyed all of those things need to be hockeyed while you're playing your game this does one of two things one it, it drastically reduces the amount of time it takes for you to perform these functions it is much quicker for you to hit a hotkey and then build a unit than it is to click on your mini map to click on the building and then to click on the unit that's so many more actions and it also distracts from your attention it detracts from your attention it, it makes it so you have to focus on building this unit rather than attacking or scouting or harassing or something else that you could be doing with your time so again use those hotkeys it's very effective and it's it's a much better idea it is much more important to concentrate on using your hotkeys than it is to try to click on the map and try to click on everything that you're building the other thing that hockey's really does for you is it allows you to produce while you are away from your base. So while you're attacking your opponent, while you're paying attention to your opponent and being harassive and annoying them, basically, um, you can at the same time be producing back your base. This is going to allow you to do two things. It's going to allow you to reinforce your army. It's also going to allow you to defend if your attack fails. You don't want to go back to an empty base with no units. So today's tip of the day, use your hotkeys. And we're going to wrap up this episode of StarCraft II Daily Report with some community questions. This is how I intend on wrapping up all of the daily reports. So if you have some general questions or just even some in-depth questions about the game, you can go ahead and send them my way. Send me a tell here on uh, YouTube. You can send me a tweet or Twitter or anything like that on any of the social networking sites. Or you can send me an email to force at forcestrategygaming.com. And make sure you title it Question of the Day. So today's question comes from shreddy wheats and he asks when playing as protoss how do you correctly wall off against zerg well the general idea is that you want to make sure you leave one space enough to fit a zealot and the rest of your units through but enough to block off the zerglings the real thing is that you want to make sure zerglings aren't running into your base that is the major threat now something else to consider depending on your playstyle and how early you want the wall off you can decide if you either want to or don't want to have a pylon at the front of the base. Now, if you wall off with the pylon, realize, yes, you will get the wall in quicker, but at the same time, your wall is going to be more vulnerable. If you instead use two gateways or a gateway in a cybernex core or a gateway in a forge to wall off and then leave that one space, you're going to have a much more durable wall, and this is going to help protect you against baneling bust. Now, if your real concern is a baneling bust and you do go for that pylon to prevent against a six pool or a ten pool or some sort of an early rush, then you're going to want to make sure you build behind the pylon to reinforce it if that bus does go through and breaks through your initial pylon. So thank you very much, guys. This has been the StarCraft II Daily Report for January 8th, 2011. If you guys like this, let me know. I do intend on continuing this up, and it's something that I really enjoy, and I think you guys will enjoy it as well. And as always, guys, this has been Force, Force Strategy Gaming. Keep watching and keep owning.